Pacific Revision. My name is Eric. How's it going? The Golden Knights are currently losing two to nothing against the Montreal Canadiens. I've seen this movie before. And, here and the they're about, about to go down on a five on three power play. So Woo! it's about to be three zero. Woo! Live coverage, baby. So you can tell when this was recorded. Uh, that voice over there, the handsome one, the golden one, the champion himself, Miguel Nunez. At least he'll always have last year. Oh, boy. What a year. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Unforgettable. You're going to hold on to that memory. We united the realm. It was great. It was beautiful. Uh, we united last week. We did unite last week. Wow. Is that what I'm telling this podcast? Reunited? Reunited. I, I agree. How yes. do I spell that? Eric hanged out last week. He spent three days in Vegas. We went to the key was for the Kings game. He came for the Kings versus Vegas game that happened. I'm glad you identified it as the Kings game. I appreciate it. Yeah, you guys won. You yeah. guys played which way with better hockey. Vegas is playing terrible hockey right now. Even when they were winning, they were not playing great hockey, you know? I mean, look, if you if you look at it this way, the Ducks kind of ruined you guys. Whatever whatever they did. Oh, that three goal comeback in the third? Mm -hmm. It absolutely destroyed. How, they have the most comebacks in the third this this season. The Six. Ducks are Six comebacks this year so far. Six in the third. And we're not even, what, 15 games in the season? They have six comebacks. I mean, uh, it's pretty good. I mean, look, look, they get the benefit of being a young team. When young teams are decent, they can just play sloppy hockey. Yeah, I it agree. Kind of, kind of, kind of plays to their. The problem uh, their is balance. when a young team is when it falls apart. Boy, does it fall apart. You, you, know mean, what I mean? you mean like losing 8 2 to Colorado? Yeah. Uh, hockey doesn't make sense. Hockey doesn't make sense, especially in a, like a long ass eighty two game regular season. It's just you know, I mean, you guys beat the Avalanche seven zero. Ducks beat you guys. Avalanche beats the Ducks eight to two. It's just it, it's a long season. You can't really fault one game, but I am lording over you with that game, the four one win over the Kings. You love to see it. Good time, Miguel. Shout out to your brother for the tickets, by the way. Yes, shout out to more. He listens, so he'll he'll hear it. Oh man, it's just yeah, a uh, little little tight squeeze for me in that game. Very, very tight squeeze. We, you and I got intimate in those chairs. We gotta, I gotta talk to Mr. T-Mobile about widening these chairs for not me, for other people. I mean, you're you're <laughs> six foot plus, right? Look, I am not a small man for those those people, those listeners, those viewers who don't know. I am I'm a fat man. It is what it is. Uh, I like when I go to these games is with my brother. He's uh -huh. a very skinny man, uh -huh. so it works for me. I'm comfortable. I hope he's comfortable too. When I arrive, bring friends. I bring skinny friends to the uh -huh. to the games so that I am comfortable, and hopefully they are comfortable <laughs> as well. But when you get sandwiched between two bigger people, because Eric, you're not small, but you're not big either. No, I'm I like, think those. I think those seats are perfect for you personally. I'm perfectly. Uh, I'm perfectly square. I'm a lot of shoulders. I'm uh, more shoulders than anything. Two people that are inching in on your space from both sides. It can get a little uncomfortable. Yeah, you and I got real close during that game. I think I had my arm around you the entire bit just so I can get my arms free to like sit and watch. You know what I mean? That was the only thing stopping me from uh, losing my mind during that game. You know what I mean? The 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 the, the touch the by comfort. me, the comfort. <laughs> oh man, we also lost a lot of money. That's uh, unfortunate. Uh, I mean, we're not gonna talk about. We're not gonna put a dollar amount on that. But we did win a lot and then lost it all. No, you won a lot and then lost a lot. I just lost a lot. I'll give you my I dollar mean, amount. My dollar amount was two hundred bucks. I was like, I was like, look, I was, I was a responsible gambler, all right? I was like, you know yeah. what? I'm gonna take out two hundred bucks. We hunted down an ATM machine, and I was like, this is this is what I'm willing to lose, you know? This is what I'm willing to to entertain my time with. Um, and I think I won like one time to like mere baby maybe cut even, but then just immediately lost it anyway. So, and that wall, well, and then. Then you gave me your money, and we got you up to like three hundred dollars. It worked. The system worked. My my strategy was: I'm terrible luck. You know who wasn't terrible luck for the first? Let's see. If we worked together for seventy two hours, the first sixty hours, you know who was good luck? Oh, I was I was on fire. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Miguel, right there. I, I like, couldn't lose. No, just like I did. <laughs> just just like the Vegas Golden Knights for the first eleven games, <laughs> could not lose, and then right at the end, blew it. Like you blow it hard. We blew it hard. We uh, Vegas. We man, Wait, the house always wins. We it's... got we got uh 
Bukaki in the in, in losses. You know what I mean? <laughs> Damn. The, the, it's just it's just no machine decided to like just. It wasn't even like like death by like a big cut. It was just death by a thousand tiny spins. Oh, it that's was the annoying. worst part. You, and, you just you just watch that money go down and down and down. And then you hit a point where you're like, I should probably catch out, but you don't because you're like, maybe, it's due, maybe, maybe the winning <laughs> spin is next. It's too. And then, then you're at break even. You're like, well, I don't want to walk out a loser. Yeah. And now you're down. It's and like, you're like, well, it's like if me. I'm gonna ride this. I'm gonna ride this to the fucking bottom. You know what I mean? Yeah, look, look, I'll transfer this over to hockey. It's like being down five nothing, right? And you're like, oh, it's you, early in the you second. You the goalie exactly. <laughs> you're you're, time left. Yeah, you're losing to the casino. <laughs> you fool the goalie. Yeah. You know, a lot is a lot at yeah. this point. You know? Yeah, <laughs> you're like, but if we score one goal, you know, uh, anything could happen. Anything could happen. And and you know what happened? Nothing. Nothing happened. It was just. It was just very sad. You know what was our big mistake, especially on the night that you gave me your money to gamble. Uh huh. Is that we left a hot machine? We did. We did leave. We did leave what wheel of fortune? Because was it? it worked the night before. We left that machine for the other, the bigger wheel of fortune, and it paid off. Yeah, it did. Because the bigger wheel of fortune does bigger payouts. You there know what a, I'm saying? There was like a Russian guy with a dog high fiving us. It was great. I know. I don't, I don't know where that guy came from, but he was like, "All right." And, and every, every time we hit a wheel spin, we won money. The guy's like, "You should leave," <laughs> but we kept that going because we kept on winning. We did until until we oh. finally hit a, a high, hit a high enough mark where I was like, "Okay, this is a lot of money. Let's get out of here." Ah, uh, it's unfortunate. A lot of good food, though. We also had a lot of good food. Oh, dude, I took uh, I took Eric. So this is this will be. We'll talk about hockey in a little bit for those listening <laughs> and watching. We will talk about hockey, but me and Eric don't hang out a lot, you know. Like three times ever. The last time I saw you was at my wedding. At your wedding. Yeah, my yeah. wedding in March. Good times. Where the Kings also won. Look, Miguel, you're 2 0 when I watch a Kings game. Uh, with me? With that you is true. Present. That is true. We might never yeah. need to watch another Vegas Golden Knights game together, then. Maybe. Maybe. Only, only one way to test this out is when if you ever do a live game if in LA. We, if, uh, if we if somehow get a Kings uh, Knights uh, playoffs, you stay the fuck away from me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, so yeah, I mean, we came, we had we came. Eric came to Vegas. We had to eat good, you know. what I'm saying I took mm-hmm. this man to Fuku Burger. It's a local Japanese style burger spot. It's freaking. It's one of my favorites. It was good. It was good. It was good. It was good. Uh, I don't like how you set me up though at that place. Because apparently, I'm like, so, oh, I I set myself up. I'm like an idiot. idiot. So, so the day that we went there, I'm a little hungover, right? So, so the re- reflex is a little slow. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, I'm I'm sluggish too yeah, that day. A little, a little, it was hurting. You know, we're not young men anymore. We're, I lost a lot of money that morning. I was depressed. <laughs> well, that 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 was your fault. I told you not to go out without me. Really, that's really the our luck broke when you decided to break up this team and you went yeah. solo. You were so <laughs> you were sleeping. I can't tell you. I had was like great. a bitch. I got the itch. Just fucking wake me up. I'm on vacation. This doesn't work. Uh, either way. Anywho, the, the, apparently the thing at Fuku Burger is supposed to give a, a funny name, and I could I could not think of a funny name. Uh, but apparently the the theme of cum was was big over there. A lot of cum names. Crazy part. So one lady was cum guzzler. I think was her name. I think she was with and her daughter. I'm pretty sure the lady yeah. was with her daughter. Yeah. Yeah, that was. A, I turned around to be like, who, what, what, like weird neck beard that plays Magic the Gathering is, you know? Yeah, answering to come lord, come guzzler, and it's just this old lady with her daughter. It's crazy. I, I, I don't know, know if it's true. Know. Why did she choose that name? Did the daughter choose the name? Again, did they, like you can come up with a name. Can you give us a name? Again, I was hungover. We could have elucidated together. No, Mar- I heard. I heard. <laughs> Mar- you know, we're in a desert. It could have been a mirage. <laughs> I, I hear it a lot. Yeah, I, that I, I know when I hear it. You know what I'm saying? Eric? Yeah, but that was good. We went to Burger. Gordon Ramsay's Burger at Planet Hollywood was good. That's, I mean, at this point, that's got to be a tradition, right? It is. Yeah. No, that's fucking just great burger. It's good. <laughs> I ate their farmer burger, which had an egg on it. Uh, and uh, what's it called? And truffle fries. Great. Yeah, truffle fries. Amazing. Uh, I got to go to Best Friend also, uh, which is like. From LA Chef, a lot of like Korean based food. Shit was slapping. But the MVP is always going to be Ocean One and Planet Hollywood. Oh, Ocean One's the best. Three for $12 drinks. All right, P3 for 10, though. The, the, the COVID took that from me as well. 
Three for ten. Now it's three for twelve. It's still a great deal. Three for twelve, so not bad. You know what I mean? Get three alcoholic beverages, pretty strong, for twelve bucks. Which is good. And yeah, then they, they definitely do not go light on the on the alcohol on no, those drinks. Phenomenal place. And then and then of course we went to the game. Miguel, the game. Golden Knights, Kings. Uh I was a little afraid. I was really hoping for uh the battle of the unbeatens. You guys unbeaten in general, us unbeaten on the road. Who would give up first? But then you guys had to lose uh, the, the game right before against Anaheim. So thanks yep. a lot. Thanks a lot in for re- that. In, in regulation. Yep. So couldn't even take uh, take any pride in beating you guys because you guys were already sleepy from that Anaheim game. But uh, I got I got to experience a few new things going here. So I have not been back to Las Vegas. This is, uh, my trip to Vegas year one for you guys predates our friendship. That's how long it's been. It's been uh, yeah. seven years at this point. Um, went to the first regular season game. God damn, Vegas is old, man. I, 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 it's over future. Seven years in the league. The future's that old, man. You know? Ah, uh, man, you, you're gonna you're gonna get a tenth anniversary patch before you know it. <laughs> God damn, man. <laughs> um, so I haven't been back since year one, and I think the Kings played relatively early that first season there. Um, but it was it brand- was early the season, yeah. It was brand new. Everything was everyone was excited to be there. Expectations were still all over the place because they got into that hot start and uh, the tragedy of, of October 1st was still kind of strong. So that was a big theme. Totally different atmosphere. Um the Vegas pregame show still 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 a hundred. You guys don't oh, it's great. I don't uh, I don't care. I don't fucking, care if people say it's cheesy. It's fucking it's, cheesy. It is. It's purposely on cheesy though. You know what I mean? Yeah, Which works. I will say it's better than when I saw it. Because it didn't make sense. Because what, what happened year one is is the guy would pull the sword out, out of, of the, the ground. And yeah. that's the story of, of who, Miguel? That is correct. King Arthur. When, the, when he was a knight and then he pulled, the, he becomes a king. It didn't make sense, but now it's fine. There's a dragon. Uh, there's a, a squire. Like, man, this guy squire, got help. Yeah. This guy has help now? <laughs> <laughs> win, win a cup and he gets an assistant. By the way, the squire, all the squire did was fucking block for him. So, no. I mean, what a shield, though. You know what I mean? It deflects yeah. dragon breath. Uh, what is what is he a fucking uh nor- wait, what what what's an effect of against dragons in Pokemon? I say as I'm wearing a Pokemon sword. Oh, I don't know. I do not know. Dragon strong against dragon. Ice is strong against dragon. Aren't dragons weak against fairy? There it is. You got it. Fairy types. No, you're right. Fairy types. There you go. So you know, uh, it's great. I enjoy it. I enjoyed the opening of the reading of the book like I'm watching Shrek. That was great. That reminded me of, of the opening of the Shrek and stuff like that. So that's good. Um, there was no giveaway. I'm a little salty about that. A little cheap. Cheap on the uh, on just giving anything, eh? Wait, I don't think... That's because they gave away so much shit at the beginning of the season that I feel like now they're not giving anything away because... Yeah. I was looking forward for the- a souvenir, but it's fine. Well, you know what I hate about Vegas? They hot. do a big giveaway in their preseason. I mean, nobody wants to go to preseason games. Well, that's how you get them to go to preseason games. Or you do what the Kings are doing and just go to Quebec for some reason. And have you know I mean? the Quebec government play pay for your preseason games. Ah, uh, that's weird. Do we have to go to Quebec City? I don't think I gotta go to Quebec City. I don't have to. It'd be cool if you can if you can manage that. It's only preseason though. But that's what I'm saying. Like if it was a, if regular, it was like season a regular season game. A game that matters. Yeah, a winter classic in Quebec or something. I also don't care about the Bruins because I think the Kings no. are playing the Bruins. So like, uh, how much do I care about Brad Marchand and David Pasternak? You know what I mean? The Bruins. You know what I mean? Ah, uh, hate Boston. The worst. They're up there. I but, love uh, them for giving us Bruce Cassidy. Other than that, they're worse. It's true. They are the worst. Um, other than that, do I have any other gripes? Uh, expensive alcohol, but but combined. That's anywhere that's, that's, though. Uh, twenty bucks for a can though. It's a uh, it twenty was, bucks. Yeah, was looked, it twenty bucks? Yeah, I think it was. <laughs> the water, Jesus, think, they went up in price again. Yeah, I think the water I bought you was like seven dollars. I swear, last season, no, two seasons ago, cans were fifteen dollars. They went up to sixteen last year, and I guess winning the cup lets you uh, <laughs> let you, add, let you add a few <laughs> the, more dollars on the top. Premium, and uh, it was fine. I got a mango cart and I think a seltzer. Like it was fine. Yeah, you got uh, the seltzer, the but uh, but light. Yeah, that's fine. I'll take it. Uh, what else happened? Not much. That's it. Kings won. Andre Kopitar scored his four in his career goal on that empty netter. Got that on tape. 
Very excited about it. Uh, kind of sleepy first period, Miguel. I think it's. I think we both discussed that. Oh my god, that was that was some of the most boring hockey I've ever seen. But like, I will, I will say, it did pick up like the last like fifteen seconds for some reason. Yeah, like, it, was, it was it was very reminiscent of uh, old Dallas, like yeah. Vegas against Dallas. Really, anyone against Dallas back in the, even just as soon as three years ago. Yeah, it felt like, like someone, it just felt like both teams were just feeling each other out the entire time. But yeah. Uh, Kings opened up a scoring, went up to nothing, scored a power play goal in the third, empty netted by Kopitar for his 400th, who debuted in his neck guard. Neck guard Kopitar. Uh, Very was, uh, noticeable to the eye. Yeah, him and Kevin Fiala are the only two Kings currently uh, wearing a neck guard. By the way, did, did you, Fiala wear it in that game? He did. He did. He's been wearing the same time. I don't know why. Anze's was just way more. Uh, I think his is just higher. He just has more neck. Probably, he just right? Has more neck. Um, but did you did you hear a side note on the um I forget what junior league it was in. Um kid recently got cut like right right below the neck, but was wearing a neck guard. So if he wasn't, he still got like stitches and stuff like that, but if he wasn't, could have been a lot worse. A so, worse. That's that's crazy. Um and then we recently had that uh Caden Gooley, I think was the player from uh, Montreal that took a skate up high. Like ugh. Oh my god, yeah. Fucking the other guy shouldn't be throwing his legs up like that though. Yeah, he's falling, Miguel. I don't think I don't think I don't think that's something oh, people are fall flat. You know what I'm saying? Well, maybe that's what they got to work on the Aussie. You got to figure out how to work, you know, fall with your legs or whatever. But that guy scorpion kicks mid fall. But scary shit. So good. Get this. It's it's been nice to see some of the NHLers like TJ Oshie and and Kopitar and start wearing these things. So it might be. I think Gretzky was saying on the TNT broadcast. It's just eventually just gonna be everybody. I would say how long until. Player safety is like, and, and NHL is all like, yeah, this is uh, everyone coming into the league from this year forward is uh, mandatory. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it was like after this year. I wouldn't be surprised. Like after this year, we hear like a meeting and maybe like in two years, it's all right. Anyone drafted after 2025? Well, I hate saying that. It makes me feel old. Anyone drafted after 2025 is you got you got to come in with it. So. Uh, be interesting, but yeah, overall game good. I enjoyed it. Uh, now I'm now one and one in in T-Mobile Arena as a Kings fan. Exciting for me. First time I visited a non San Jose arena for the second time, um, because you know I live close by. So obviously, I've gone a butt ton of of. You go to Kings every games. Kings game in San Jose, or no? Yeah, I do. Sometimes great idea. Other times, Timo Mayo scores five goals on you, and you're like, "Why did I? Why did I drive to San Jose?" <laughs> I mean, we talked about this maybe on the podcast, definitely in person. It doesn't like when Vegas plays San Jose. It doesn't matter how bad San Jose is; those motherfuckers play like oh, they'll try. They're, yeah, like they're going for the cup. You know what yeah. I mean? No, same like thing. You're, like you're bad. Stop trying. Give, just give us the win. You know, what same I mean? thing. I will say the the funniest thing. So I, I was at the it was a Martin Luther King Jr. Day game. Timo Meyer scores five goals. The next week, this is when they still shared um, a stadium with their AHL team. I go watch the Ontario Reign play the Barracuda. And uh, under a week, there's a guy there with a shark jersey that says Timo got five. And I'm like, you son of a bitch. How quickly did you get that made? And I took a picture with him because I was like, you know what? I respect it. I respect the troll. It was just, That's just like name bar Timo got and then the jersey number five. That's just oh my god! What a waste of money! It's funny, but what a waste of fucking money! I respect it. I like it. Uh but yeah, it was fun. Uh glad we finally got to watch a game. It's been a long time coming. Uh just next stop, go L.A. Crypto dot com Arena. We'll figure it out. The house that Kobe built. Oh, I'm for sure. Next, no matter what day it lands on, and I'm saying this is gonna land on fucking like a holiday, a New Year's or something. Here's no matter what day it lands Eve. on. LA, I mean Vegas and LA next year. I'm going because apparently they only have one game in LA this year, and that's stupid. I mean, it's the weird schedule. They got to figure that out. I'm tired of the three, the three schedule, the three like. But it's not three with every games. team though, is mm. it? It switches. I don't know why the LA team isn't the the, the four game this season. You know what I mean? I feel like your division, you know, in division games you should play them four times, two away, two home. Yeah, but. I don't make the schedules, man. I don't make the schedules. It's weird. But good job, Miguel. You know, I appreciate it. Four to one. Thank you for hospitality. It's good yeah, to win. It was fun. It was a fun night. It was a fun week. Uh, you know who's not having a fun week? 
Cool. Jay Woodcroft fired from the Oilers. Yeah, that uh, must not be a good time in the gonna... unemployment line right now. Are you surprised? No, I mean, I said it in our podcast last last season during when Edmonton Oilers played the Golden Knights in the playoffs because I said Woodcraft is clearly getting out coach. The only strategy he has when they ain't winning is let's put Dreisaitl and McDavid together. And if that doesn't work, he is shit out of ideas and doesn't know what to do. He's a young coach. He's still learning, but... I mean, I could coach them and all this with that game plan. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me, let me, let me flip it to you this way. Yeah. You know why <laughs> the, the the only option for them is McDavid and Dry Saddle? That's all they got. Because the fucking GM sucks. <laughs> like the the fact we did coach that that Ken Holland is has has another lifeline is kind of insane to me because he hasn't done anything. He hasn't done well in the draft selections at all. Like, there's no one they've drafted that he, since he's been there that's been able to plug in and he's been there for at least a handful of years and the goalie situation is ass because of him Miguel it's ass Jack Campbell's fucking banished to goddamn Bakersfield a a, a thing I wish on no man nobody even in, to Bakersfield, live in Bakersfield he is not having a good time fucking god damn that four goals allowed in, in his first game at the Condor like it's it's uh, tough 15 shots oof and I and I will say, usually AHL numbers are a lot worse for goalies, just because yeah, de- defense no isn't defense. great. Yeah. But there was a, there was a specific goal that I saw that just dribbled through him for some reason. That's just a man who's oh yeah, right, right between the pads, who's got the yips, baby. Yeah, he doesn't got it. And and I hate that I was right about Jack Campbell's fit in in, in Edmonton because while he played on a terrible Kings team, and I will say awful, god awful, that eighteen nineteen. Uh, LA Kings team 1920 also bad, you know. Second line Kyle Clifford, second line Brendan Leipzig, bad. Hey, just those team, those teams got you Quinn and Byfield. It's true, and Alex Turcott. But even with those teams, McClellan had to play a defensive structure, right? One three one. We still do it, but we don't rely on it. I mean, you saw a lot of it at the game. I fucking I love the one three one just because everyone hates the one three one, but I like that they don't have to rely on it anymore. It's it, so boring. It is. 18, 19, 19, 20, though, that is the only way that roster could could, you know, uh compete with a lot of the other teams that they were with. Um, especially that that COVID uh division with Vegas, the Minnesota Wild, the Avalanche, and shit like that. He's always been behind decent defensive structure. In Toronto, less so, but they were still pretty not bad defensively. They were never the best. Um, Toronto has issues uh, also roster construction-wise, but in a different area. You know what I mean? But you did see Jack Campbell lose his confidence there by the end of it. Although he played pretty decent in that last playoff series against Tampa that they lost. But Jack Campbell also won, I think, 10 in a row to start the season, which is, I think, an NHL record in Toronto. And my biggest concern was he's going to Edmonton. And Edmonton, even at that time, doesn't really have a defensive structure no. for, you know, for anything. Like Darnell Nurse isn't great defensively. Cody Cece isn't great defensively. Vin- Vincent DeHarnay, seaweed man, as they call him. He might be big, but he's big for nothing. Isn't great defensively. Brett Kulak is maybe their best defenseman, but even then, and Evan Bouchard's young but good, and but young defensemen are always going to be a little more aggressive than they have to. There is no fucking that defense does not help their goalies at all, and I don't think you'd be surprised that they're both him and Stuart Skinner are floating around an eight five save percentage, eight six eight seven, which is like fucking unplayable. But I know they're in a three game win streak after the coaching change. Hooray, but I don't think you could say that like the coaching change is the reason that they're there. It's because McDavid started scoring again and Dry Saddle started scoring again, you know? I agree because I, how many times do we see this? There's a coach change and the team will win a few games off the back, but then completely fall off again. So we'll see if they can maintain this. And I'll be honest with you, I'll be honest with you, despite the three game win streak, it's still a tough climb for Edmonton because they buried themselves so bad. And yes. other teams in the Pacific are playing well, like Vancouver Canucks, 
LA is playing well. Seattle's starting to pick it up again. Vegas is okay right now. Although I love they, it. I they love got that, off to a hot start. I love that you said Seattle and they're two of two of the games that they've won in a three game win streak that they have. I, I understand that. Yeah. But th- despite that, they've been pretty well. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're they're around five hundred. They're not awful, but they're not great either. So they're they're so they have a three game winning streak, right? So they beat the Kraken. That was Jay Woodcroft's last game. They finished the road trip, fired him. Uh, next two games against the Islanders and again against the Kraken. Kraken, it took uh, Evander Kane, I think, to score a natural hat trick for them to win that game. Yeah, so uh, Seattle was up three one going yeah. to the third. So two teams, at least for this, two teams that are like. They could and make the playoffs, fair, but probably yeah, not. I watched that game. Seattle was very angry because the game, the game tire with like seconds left, mm-hmm. goes off of offensive zone draw for Edmonton. Uh, Dry Saddle wins the, the draw. Yeah, immediately cross checks Belmar into the ice, cross checks him again on the ice. So then, uh, then. Dry style is looks up, gets the pass, passes it to Kane, who scores to tie it. Where if he got called for the penalty that it was, they don't uh they don't score that goal. And the only reason they scored that goal is because Seattle was was Belmar was not available to do anything because he got cross checked three times into the ice. Yeah, their next three, it's gonna be like their first challenges. You have the lightning, you know, uh what two out of the last four Stanley Cup champions? Uh, the Panthers and the Hurricanes. Those are the next three. After that, Capitals, Ducks, Golden Knights. So four out of six are against, I don't want to say cup contenders, but they're all upper echelon playoff contending teams. Yeah. Um, that'll be the real test for them, whether they've learned anything or they're still, I don't want to say bad, but they still are going to suffer from their their roster blemishes until they can figure out goaltending or or man, make a trade or something. But, like, I've been listening to, you know, our buddies over at Oilers Nation, and, like, they, they know that there's no goaltending trade right now that's available to them. Like, something might come up January, February, but as of right now, they're rolling with Stuart Skinner, and they called up Calvin Pickard from the AHL, and that's kind of all you can do is kind of hopefully I mean, they can hold it down. And he doesn't need them to be average, but I don't know. Like I said, this... uh this team, this fan base deserves their demise. That's because you're a hater. <laughs> no. They're just arrogant. They thought they thought the cut was theirs. You thought the cup was yours. And it was. So right, I have well. actual reason to believe that. That's fair. Two, they signed Evander Kane. When in my opinion, nobody no team should have probably hired him. Yeah. Signed him. Fair. So they gained a good player at a very cheap price because no one else, everyone else had morals and didn't want to sign this guy. You know what I mean? By the way, I love that you're hating right now. And as your hair slowly drifts in front of your face, you're kind of resembling Spider-Man 3, uh, <laughs> Tobey Maguire. <laughs> <laughs> as he lets the Venom take over. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay, but w- one more thing. Are the Oilers catering too much to McDavid? So... Uh, Knobloch, the new coach for the Oilers, coached them in juniors. Yeah. The, I believe, I don't know the exact position, but I want to say the current CEO of the Oilers is Connor McDavid's former agent. I mean, did you not see McDavid? He is angry. He's fucking miserable. He fucking finally scored against the Oilers? No, I'm going to say the Islanders? McDavid is angry that people are implying that he has any say in... Uh, who gets hired and who doesn't? He he does though. He does. I know he does, but he he said to the media he was angry that people were implying but like Edmonton, that they hired Edmonton's, this coach because yeah, but Edmonton's done this. Like they're they're like main people were Oilers legends. Like Yari Curry's hanging out behind the bench. And now you know, and you know what, McDavid, it's true. We know it's true, but it's okay. You should be catered to. You're the fucking best player in the league. I'm not. We're not I'm not saying you shouldn't be. I think you should be catered to. McDavid to Los Angeles. It's happened. Gretzky 2.0, baby. Can't and then wait. he just he just thanks your thanks your your guys' team. Uh, that's fine with me. You I'm guys pay, you guys give up too much to get him. We make we make a final, losing the final, and just never make it back again. And then never make it back. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine with me. 
I'd be okay with it. Give me McDavid. Let me or Dry Saddle. Give me Dry Saddle two years. Our cap opens up in two years. How about you? How about this, Miko? You get McDavid, I'll get Dry Saddle. How's that? That's I'll take it. I'll, I'll take that. Although <laughs> I've been very open about I'm saying I don't think Dry Saddle is the number two player in the league. I mean, that's fine. I mean, currently he isn't playing like it, so it's not. It's not I don't think to... Dry Saddle is a top 10, top 15 player who gets pulled into number two because of number one you, you know, know what i'm excited well how about this we'll wait till like the end of the new year and we'll current the current season top 10 players from miguel we'll see where dry saddle lands i mean uh, i mean it's gonna be tough to beat uh the starting uh 15 of golden knights but <laughs> number two keegan cola <laughs> this man has like two points in the last 20 games he punched uh, why is he number two he punched this- good it is, it, it's, it's way too early to to say this, but like I like I said in our little group chat, Andres Kovatar contract comes to the end when McDavid's contract comes to the end with Edmonton. And I'm not, to, not to say Andres is not going to play after that, but that's what seven million. It'll go down a little bit more if he decides to keep going. You know, not only that. Uh, the cup's gonna go up. You know what I mean? The ca- cap. I'm saying. I mean, the ca- the cup is going to go up in LA. You're right, man. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, when Vegas raises it. No, there's no way Vegas can play LA in the finals. But holy sh! I mean, COVID three. <laughs> that COVID that two. is true. That is true. Uh, although you know, it's funny. I was thinking about how I I kind of missed the Canadian division from the COVID year. And I'm Why? not. I just knew. I don't think it's neat. I like to change. And I'm not saying every year, but hear me out. Like that, w- once every ten years, let's just create new divisions just for that one season, and then we go back to the normal oh, ones. Oh man, that that actually would be very exciting, and to change it up. Look, I'm just saying, like we like like Toronto. You know to, what? I'll be Toronto, honest with you. There's look, some of these teams I fucking I hate seeing all the time. You know what I'm look, saying? Toronto used to play in the West. Detroit used to play in the West. You can figure it out. Toronto used to play in the West, they man. Did. They did. Why do you think they? How? They, I don't know. How? I don't know. I was in, in the nineties. I was born. There's, well, there's nothing west about Toronto. You know what I'm saying? No, but you know, there's nothing west about Detroit either. But it's a little closer, I guess. Um, just once every like a decade, bring back the Canadian division and just you know gamble. Like do a maybe like a Southwest division. We throw in Dallas and Nashville. Maybe the Florida teams. I don't know. There's nothing like southwest about Florida yeah, either, but put but, uh, like, put, uh, put Arizona back in my division. You know what I mean? Yeah, why not? I miss, I miss I miss those rascals. You know, you could do a home and home again with them. You know, like like it'd be it'd be interesting to at least switch it up. Like I'd love to be in a division with like Nashville. That sounds fun. I have nothing to hate them. Maybe I'll grow to hate them. I do. I do. I hate that. Uh, that Vegas really doesn't have any rivals. You know what I mean? Because I feel I feel like rivalries are just much more fun. They're also more aggravating when you lose to them, but. Uh, I mean, that's, I don't know. Uh, I've heard this talk a lot too that there's like no real rivalries in the NHL. But no, I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm saying for Vegas. No, I do no, think no. there's real rivalries in the NHL. I just don't think for Vegas there is. I mean, us. I mean, we got to be like, in the there, playoffs. There's no, you. there's no team that I lose to, and I get, and I get like not yet, not yet. Angry. You haven't dude. lost to many teams, all right? You know, like. Yeah. The you can o- say that the, again, Eric. The only, I mean, I, I say it every time. Like, think about it. Think about the teams you've lost in the playoffs, right? There's no real animosity. You lost to the Capitals here one. Eh, we weren't supposed to be here. Feel yeah, good. Yeah, we were not supposed to be there. Year two, Getting that far was a victory, in my opinion, of year, that season. Year two, a, a monumental choke job against the Sharks, up 3-1. You know, uh, and that, from, that definitely stung for now, uh, for a long time, Eric. That but, definitely stung for a long time. P- Pavelski major, uh, but uh, all that cups stuff. heal all wounds, you know what I mean? Well, I'm saying the, the the following year, I'm pretty sure you guys played the sharks again, got your revenge, so like it evens out. Um, no, we didn't. We've only played the sharks twice after that, they were bad. They, they started missing the playoffs after that. We beat the shit out of them in year one, and then oh, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. And that was that was their revenge, so, and, then, so then that's why it helps you to feel good. And then Vegas they, revenge was that they went into a poverty franchise after that run, correct, and they, correct, they got right. nothing out of you know what I mean. So, so like, there's hatred from except from them for bad to contracts and, and bad trades. So, bravo, <laughs> San Jose, um. You blew it against Dallas, but that was in COVID, so like, eh. Uh, Montreal the year after. Another choke job. So really, really, you're more, really, you're more angry about yourself about those two, like Dallas and I mean, Montreal. Yeah, the, like, the, that the Montreal one. I was I was angry at uh, Flurry. Yeah, 
So we had to ship his ass out of here. You know what I mean? Get um, out of here. You've only played Colorado once. You beat and them. And then we missed the playoffs the year after that. You missed the playoffs. So again, you're angry at yourself more than anybody. Yep. And then you win the cup. So like, there's really none of that like back and forth. Like, yeah. Like you swept us year one, but like in the regular season, we're rivals. Beyond that, I don't really think there's much. In the I'm regular just... season, Vegas and uh, Jose, I mean Jose, and uh, LA literally are tied right now and yeah. wins. Yeah, and like it's always you a good guys game. You have the upper hand because you have more overtime losses to us. Yeah, but I mean we're one zero and one this year. Uh, we got a third game coming up in December, and then that's it. Um, so I think that's why, and it hasn't been you know it hasn't organically grown. And also, you've only been around for seven seasons or six seasons plus this one. So, and then I mean they tried to force the Arizona one before they got moved, but Arizona was bad. Man, I hope they make the playoffs. I want to see a playoff game in that little little barn of theirs. Well, I, I think they're good. They're good enough to make playoffs now. Yeah, the central. I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying back then they they were yeah. bad. Yeah, central's bad. Uh, I mean Seattle, maybe two newest teams, but like Seattle hasn't been good for that long. Also, you haven't played in the playoffs yet, so like it'll take time. Eventually, you'll play them in the playoffs. Have that history. Um, I also just hate the playoff format. It sucks. I hate it. I hate the, this weird division trying to match up to tries to force these. You know, I mean, like it, it would mean yeah. a lot more if two two against three didn't happen every goddamn year, and it, you know, you some you somehow luck into a Western Conference final matchup. Like, I don't know. I just hate it. The way the way it's formatted now is just by the time you get to the conference finals and the uh, and the final final, like there's like no juice left. You know what I mean? Yeah. But. You'll get there one day, and one day we'll get re- our revenge. I hope we play in the playoffs this year. I hope uh, we make the I'm playoffs. Like, I can't speak to the East, but I feel like on the in the West, every year, the conference finals kind of like, oh, this is not the matchup. Uh, we would have won it. You know what I mean? No. no. It's kind of gross. It's blank in Dallas. It's the, well, on the East, you yeah, guys had Tampa and the Islanders for back-to-back years, and that was just boring slug-out hockey. You know what I mean? Like... Even they like do you, do you consider them rivals like the Islanders and the Lightning? Not really. They played twice in the playoffs though. Um, God, yeah, because like the, the Vegas, the Vegas, both the Vegas, uh, Dallas conference final games were not. The first one was just boring Dallas hockey. Mm-hmm. The second time was Dallas no longer plays boring hockey, but Vegas stomped them out. And the only thing exciting that happened in that series was the whole Jamie Ben drama and how they lost every game that Jamie Ben was that, in. That'll and never, only one when Jamie Ben was out. That'll never not be funny. The fact that they went down 3 0 with Jamie Ben. Jamie Ben gets suspended. They win two games without him. And then he comes back just to get personally swept. Yeah. <laughs> just, it's just the funniest thing ever. And absolutely clobbered in that last game, too. But I will say, Miguel, those fr- the first round's the best. I just wish that we had a little bit more of that drama and kind of personal touch to the rest of them. But. Go one through eight, Gary. Gary Bettman, one through eight. Now, you know who else needs to do better? We'll say this, Miguel. The PWHL, the Professional Women's Hockey League. Uh, unveiled their jerseys. And it looks like they're going into the first season without without any team name, out of any, uh, no individual branding, the same template, just different colors, diagonal words with the city name on it. It's so bad. <sighs> I'm glad it's happening, but Jesus. Yeah, like very low effort. Look, I'm very t- low effort. Let me let me tell you, I do seeing the announcement definitely. You know, just get, it sucks. It's like, all right, it's weird. Again, our, our buddy Daniel did point this out. It's been five months. That's a lot to get flipped around in, in a short time. I mean, I uh, get it. Our buddy Antonio is creating logos on a- EHSL. <laughs> That's true. Every other week, I'm t- he needs to stop switching our team. He nailed whatever look he had like three tries ago was perfect. Oh, it was it, perfect. And yeah. now, just like Miguel, just like the gambling, we hit our peak and we're like, you know what? What if we try one more time? And it's gotten worse every time. But yeah, it's it's very I understand it's a very short time, but it was very low effort. I will say though, it, uh, it, the, the, the women deserve better, you know? And they do. And it does get exciting though. You see Sarah Nurse in her jersey, Marie Philippe Land in her jersey. Like, all right, you get hyped up a little bit. When but, when does this start? Do you know they, they open camp? Um, no, they're already skating together. I believe so. Yeah, I know they open camp. 
Um, let me double check. But it, but in, in the meantime, I will say this. I have an idea to, to bring some intrigue. All right. Let's say the champion, whoever wins the inaugural year, right, of this league, gets a team name. Only once you win your first cup do you get a team name. Because it's gonna be there's gonna be one one team who can't win this goddamn cup and just never gets a team name. What do you think? Oh my god, that'd be I, I would love that. Or and like, then, why why is this team called the PWHL Montreal? Because they haven't won a cup since it opened. You're always gonna be stuck in Montreal. Now uh, Montreal's about to win 23 cups and then before they expand to big a bigger league. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're, 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 they're going to front load their cuffs in the, in the PWHL. Uh, so the league announced uh, this week that all six clubs will get together in Utica, New York, December 3 to the 7 for preseason scrimmages, training and information ses- uh, sessions. I don't see much well, about when it starts. I would love to go to one of the one one of the games this season, but unfortunately, it's all on the East Coast, you know? Yeah, which I get it. A lot more cities closer together, I, all that good stuff. Yeah. But I do hope if they I, do like a, I don't know, like, scrim- like I don't want to say scrimmages, like but like regular season games, like in and, and I always sites. said this: the first time I go and take a vacation to the East Coast, it's gonna be uh for Disney World and nothing else, you know. Disney World. Yes. You haven't been? No. I don't know if Before. I. Well, Before. fair. Yeah, fair enough. If I would have, if I would have saved my or my savings, my winnings, I probably could have I already have paid for half the trip. What <laughs> what's in Disney World that's not in Disneyland? A lot. Like what? The world. Is that like an actual thing? Like is there a world attraction? No, no, or? no. It's just Disney World is four theme parks where Vegas, where LA is two. Or is it five? They have many more right at Los Angeles. Disneyland is one the OG, and like I always tell people, it's the best. It's the greatest hit album. Yeah, you get all the hits. You love all. You get all the good stuff. You get your Space Mountains, your Tower Terror, your Incredible Coaster, your Haunted Mansion. You get all the greatest hits at Disneyland in California Adventures. But sometimes, you know, I want to. I want to listen to the whole discography. You know what I mean? I want. I want to get on uh, the Tron ride. I want to get on. The Seven Doors mining car. I want to get all the cool rides too, you know? I guess. I don't know. I'm just, I don't know. I've never had a, maybe, maybe I'm a SoCal snob where I'm like, the best one's here already. I don't, I don't need to go see this other shit. I don't know what to tell you. I saw Star Wars line. It was great. I've been to Avengers Campus. It's great. I don't need anything else. By the way, the league starting sometime in January. I couldn't find an exact date. This oh, article, okay. this article in sports that won't tell me. But I mean, that's not, that's not that's not far out. Sometimes in January, I I do hope I did like the the the, the PWL, which was imagine like, they did a eighty two game season. Oh my just god! Teams. <laughs> I, I, if you want to talk about building rivalries and hatred? That's what you do. You just lock teams, <laughs> make them play a thousand two, times. Two two team divisions. You know what I mean? Everyone makes the playoffs. Um, I'm curious how they're going to do it the first year. Then have they announced the playoff structure? They probably just do four teams. Two teams don't make it. I would assume so. I don't know how else you do it, unless you do everyone's in and you do like first top two seeds buys. Everyone else play it out. I have no idea. It'll be interesting. But but the thing I hope I I have not read anywhere. I've looked information for the PWHL. I wonder how they're going to release these games because the one thing I liked about the previous Professional Women's Hockey League was that it was easy to watch. It was either on ESPN Plus, which is a great service, or Twitch, yeah, which was great. I can watch it at work. I can watch it at home. It was great. So I, I hope... Are they really... Yeah, yeah I don't know. You know the they... problem with PWHL? What? There's another PWHL. What is it? It's Providence uh, playoff hockey. Ah, no one cares about them. Nobody because cares. I Google PWHL uh, playoff structure, and I'm just getting the uh, the Providence uh, women's. Uh, yeah, and I'm yeah I'm looking for information, but it'll be interesting. I'm excited to see how the camps are going to open and how that stuff. And uh, they're playing at pretty decent sized venues, which is a good. 
start off. I think <laughs> I think the smallest PWHL venue is still bigger than the Arizona Coyotes. So good. That's that's your, that's what you love to see. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm excited. I'm excited to see it. I know they're getting a lot of questions. The athletes are about the lack of branding or whatever, but I don't think they care. I think they're just excited to finally have a league of their own and then have that and build that for the future. A league of their own. They should uh, make this into a movie and think, call it a, a league of their own. I think I think that already exists. It does. That's a joke. I know you don't watch movies. So. I don't. I don't really. You you made me list it's like a, a, a thousand movies that I had. It's a, it's a baseball about the women's baseball. Is that it's the a, one movie. with Tom Hanks? Yes. Base. But there's no crying in baseball. Yes. There you go. Yes. See, see your your boys in those movies. I've seen I've seen that movie. Ask me where. Good man. Good man. Where? In the back of a headrest on a bus. On That's the gray, crazy. The gray That's the only time I've seen that movie. Um, speaking of feel good movies, Miguel, last topic that I want to talk to you about. Uh, how does it feel to no longer oh, yeah, be to what what show? <laughs> no, because I went stop, stop, stop. <laughs> no, different show, different show. <laughs> <laughs> how does it feel to no longer be on the top of the mountain in the Pacific Division? We have a new uh, Pacific Overlords, your Vancouver Canucks. I mean, we're tied up there together, but uh, goal differential, Miguel. They because they play shittier teams that let in more goals, they're first. Yeah, I mean, good for them. It's are a the... nice little, it's a nice little underdog story. I mean, look, I asked this question on my TikTok, which is uh, Eric Rian. Also, you could see a little video of Miguel's and I's adventures in Vegas that I recorded. At what point do you declare a team good, and at what point do you declare a team bad? Because I think I'm ready to declare the Vancouver Canucks. So good at this point. I'm going to say it right here. Vancouver Canucks, that's a good team. Good team. All right. But I'm not ready to put the knife in Edmonton yet. Okay. Because that, that was your TikTok where you said you stitched the Team Dangle podcast. Yeah, because one of them wouldn't let the hopes of Calgary and Edmonton die. I mean, he, he kind of has a point right now. He does right now with the, with the Edmonton Oilers winning three in a row. But... At what point do you just have to accept? That's, that's really what I'm asking. And I mean, at what I point the the age old rule or saying is American Thanksgiving. So teams, you got uh, you got uh, a week to get good. You know what I mean? It's Before just... you're declared bad. No, Vancouver's good. That team's legit. I've seen them play. Uh, because there's other teams I've seen, like Seattle last year. Uh. Like uh, San Jose, those first few years, where I'm like, they're winning, but this is unsustainable. They're not actually playing good hockey. They're just scoring. Uh, Vancouver is playing good hockey, and they're getting phenomenal goaltending, and they're scoring on their chances. That is a good team. That is a scary team. Like but I also I also will say there's there's very high chances that team falls off the edge too. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. There's there's a couple of teams that like, I think like no matter how good they are, I'm always gonna be like, but are you good? Toronto. Just I'm looking to me, at like I'm looking LA at play LA plays fundamentally good hockey. That's a good hockey team. Vegas plays fundamentally good hockey. That's a good hockey team. Vancouver, like I said, they've been solid, but I wouldn't go that far. But their wins have been so impressive. I know. When they're on, they're on. Like, their whole team is fucking clicking right now. I mean, anyone can score 10 on San Jose. <laughs> can't, even, can't even say that Jose correctly. I don't know. <laughs> it's just, I don't know. Like, are the Ducks not a bottom dwelling team anymore? They're 9-7. and seven. They're 500. Like, are they, are they, like, are they a 500 team or are they still overachieving? Is, I, I think Buffalo today lost Tate Thompson for a whole month. And they've already been struggling beforehand. I think we could. I I feel confidently saying they're going to be bad again this year. Ottawa. I said it before, and I'll say it again. Buffalo, you ain't real. You just not. Ottawa seven and seven. Montreal seven seven and two. And like those two seven and sevens feel different. Like it feels like Montreal. Like that's good building. Uh, Ottawa is just more of the same. You know what I mean? More under under achieving. Man, Ottawa should be so much better than they are. And yet here they are. 
And like and like the lightning are six, six, and four, but I'm like, I'm not worried about them. <laughs> like the, the regular season doesn't really matter. I mean they're getting Vasilevsky back next week, right? Or this week. It's supposed to be I think he's, been, gonna, he's been practicing with the team. He has, so it's four to six weeks, but like do you really need him until January? Just get him healthy, you know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. There's no there's no point of rushing him back. And then the Bruins are the Bruins twelve one and two, best team in the league right now. Just I don't know how they keep doing it. They won't go away. They lose. I mean, they, they should probably stop because we saw how it turned out for them last year. Yeah, and then Colorado's been weird. They got blown out by multiple teams. Uh by Including Vegas. But yet they're ten Seven. and but yet, Seven zero. But yet they're ten and five, like fine. Uh Dallas, probably the most boring best team, 11 3 and 1. No one really talks about them, but they have a hell of a first line with Rupe Hens, Pavelski, and Jason Robertson. Jake Ottinger in it, one of the better goalies in the league. So there's a lot of teams where I look at their like uh, around 500. I'm like, nah, you'll be fine. But there's other teams like Edmonton and Calgary. Where I'm like, I don't know. I just don't buy into it. And I, I don't know what they can do to, to flip it around, it's, especially with even with this three game winning streak. Like, Edmonton is still behind the Flames, technically. They're still behind Seattle. They're still behind the Ducks. And they're definitely behind the Kings, the Knights, and the Canucks. Like, I'm telling you, like, that wild card race is going to be real interesting if Edmonton can figure it out. Because that, if they're a second wild card, if you win your conference, your prize, no matter how bad the Edmonton team is, it's still Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisel, like I said last week, so... It's it's gonna be a tough climb though for Edmonton. Yeah, for sure. Um, anything else you want to talk about? Are we good? Another good week. Yeah, I think we are good because we might be back early next week with uh to talk about more deep dive into the Pacific Division, but we will see. That is depending on our guests. All right. Well, uh, don't hold your breath because the week after that's Thanksgiving. We probably won't record anything because I'm going back home. Oh, are you? Yeah, I am. Gotta go back home. Okay. Well then, I, hold then. Hopefully, we do record on Sunday so that we I, can post up. I'm literally going Thursday morning and then leaving Friday morning. I'm just in and out. So you're going, going back, 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 back to Los to Angeles, LA, LA. <laughs> yep. God, what a what a sour note to fucking end this goddamn episode on. Thanks a lot, Miguel. <laughs> Where are you listening at home? I'm Miguel. You can find me at Miguel Kicks all over the internet. Eric, where can the people find you? Oh, uh, you know, different places. Underscore Eric Oriana and either threads, Twitter, Instagram. Go uh, follow this man on TikTok. Yeah, follow me on TikTok where I don't have an underscore. I have my name properly. Eric Oriana. No underscore. It's great. God I love damn it. right. You, you know love I mean? to see it. You know what? That's the only platform that matters for me. That is the only one that matters. He makes great content. He makes great videos. They're funny. They're cool. You should check them out and like them. Thank you, Miguel. I appreciate it. Miguel, e- send us yes. home. Send us home, buddy. Either way, for all you listening at home, for all you watching us, thank you each and every single one of you. We appreciate all of you. And so we see you again. I hope you have a wonderful day or night. Peace. Goodbye. Get it. Night. I get it.